Nate Ellis, and today we are in Monrovia, Indiana at our shop, CME Motors, uh, and we are going to install the LFD off-road full roof rack system on my 2010 Toyota 4Runner trailer edition. One of the advantages of this roof rack is the fact that it does come to you via boxes and it does not have to be freighted to you like a lot of other roof racks that are one piece and already assembled. You can just have your UPS man deliver it right there on your front door. Don't have to go to a freight depot to pick it up and the shipping is generally much cheaper than what you'd pay for another, manuf another manufacturer's roof rack. Now this is the plaque that we received at the Appalachian Toyota Roundup showing us that uh, we'd won the 4Runner roof rack, and that roof rack is going on today with Nate's 4Runner because I don't own a 4Runner, I own a FJ Cruiser. So the crossbars even come with custom packaging. That's really making sure that what you get comes to you in great order without any things on it. And it finishes, like I said, it's just really top notch. Um, here's some instructions. And some hardware. All the hardware is looks to be like grade eight, uh, grade eight hardware. Very nice. So the first thing that we need to do is remove the old rack and on this 2010 5th Gen 4Runner the roof rack actually uses Torx 40s. There's no uh, trim to remove so that's good, that's a plus. We don't have to use a body panel tool or anything else like that. We're just using a uh, electric ratchet there with a uh, Torx bit, a 40 Torx bit, a T40. That should come off pretty easily. It should just be about eight bolts in there, I think, all the way around, and we'll be lifting that roof rack off here shortly. So we have the uh, roof rack off, and we're cleaning around the holes here. Um, there's a total of eight screws, four on each side, and there's this um, other really good thing about this roof rack is there is it is a no-drill application. So we're not going to have to drill any holes at all. It actually bridges to the front there, and. Not all roof racks are created that way. I'm, I'm resisting saying other brands because I don't want to misrepresent them or say anything that's not correct, but there is several other brands on the market that you have to drill further holes. Um, now, in the instructions, it's pretty clear to put uh, RV sealant, T RTV sealant, silicone around the holes. Uh, one note, though, that I can say from experience and just really reading a number of different instructions for roof rack installations is that you don't want to put too much sealant around these holes. And the reason being is this is a rain gutter of sorts and the water will travel underneath this, um, will travel underneath this rubber molding. If you put uh, too much RTV sealant on there it actually will make a damming effect and not allow for the water to travel through this rain gutter for lack of better terms. So you want to basically put enough to make sure that it goes completely around the hole but not too much that you create like a damming effect uh, once the mounts are in place. So that's very important. Alright so this is step three and four and Nate's going to put some of the silicone around the holes there. And as discussed earlier, we're just gonna we're gonna make sure to put ample amount, but not too much. Nate, you think those uh, spacers are aluminum? Is that what those are? Yeah, or they, steel? they look like uh, anodized aluminum. Nice. So obviously, those are gonna resist corrosion. 
better than anything. So there's the spacer, it comes with four, one for each corner, and it's literally gonna sit. So the open side goes towards the inside? Yep. All right. So what we're doing now is uh, step five, and, base, and what it wants you to do is it wants you to put these crossbars, uh, one in the front, one in the rear, and one in the middle. Okay, the crossbar bolts, the washers, and the nuts are all provided with the roof rack kit, uh, and it shows the order in which it wants you to use uh, a normal washer and then the bolt at the end. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, obviously, this is grade 8 hardware, so it's not going to rust on it, which is nice. millimeter head uh, which states that in instructions as well so we're gonna leave that just hand tight for now until we get everything fitted and then I'll go back and retighten everything so. yeah because the instructions they say basically leave everything loose until you get it kind of squared up there so what we're putting on now is we're gonna put the uh, wind fairing on the front the uh, full rack has the wind fairing and the three-quarter and obviously the half doesn't um, so just keep that in mind that when you are putting the front and rear pieces together to get this thing squared up before lifting it onto the forerunner, you're going to need to make sure that you're not grabbing a crossbar, but you're actually grabbing the wind fairing. The uh, instructions currently are only for the three quarter. Uh, there's no instructions available yet for the full, so just keep that in mind when you're installing this. But it's going to install basically just like we installed that crossbar, um, and to show you that detail right there. We're just gonna mount it up the same way. Especially the holes are very, very precise. Uh, so you definitely, you know, being the carrier bolts are made to fit into these slots, um, one of the things that you're gonna have to do is really torque them down, to get them to fit the first time, and then go back and loosen them up uh, if there's fitment issues. Yeah, the fit and finish so far, I'm, I'm very impressed with it. Yeah, there's no um, doubt about it. This is, uh, got to be one of the most world-class racks that I've ever seen, so. Yeah, you, you can tell. I mean, these folks have been building metal products for a long time, I mean, they're not new to it, and that's, that's really, I think, the benefit. Uh, they're kind of like stepping off from a shop that actually does this a bunch. So we had the roof rack up on the Forerunner, and just a couple notes. Uh, we did exactly have the instructions. Well, not exactly. We put a front, we put the front wind fairing on and then the a rear one on, and we didn't put a center one up. Um, but we actually tightened all the bolts down. Uh, that way we were able to lift it up more precisely and more securely without the rack ratcheting. If we would have put the center roof or crossbar in, that would have kept it from ratcheting also a little bit more, but it still would have been kind of flimsy. Um, there's nothing flimsy about this rack, especially when everything is tightened up. What we've done now though, we've loosened the bolts back up and left a couple threads between the washers and the sides. So that way we're able to more precisely put the bolts down into the forerunner itself. Uh, so just want to make sure that you do that. You don't want to torque on it. You want to basically, uh, you want to get these uh, rails in the side mounted precisely because you want everything to be nice and square and also following the body, body line as it's supposed to. We've uh, loosened those screws up and I was making mention on the GoPro camera that uh, we're actually gonna put just a little bit of RTV on the threads. Um, that'll just keep moisture from entering the thread itself. But we did make a good point. After uh, eight plus years that these bolts came out very easily. There was no ratcheting on them whatsoever, no torquing on them. So they sealed up, but just to make sure that they uh, are easily taken off in the future in case he wants to basically do anything from the top here, then those would, those would be able to come out easily. One of the things that I had mentioned that's not mentioned in the instructions is that the nylon inserts that you will see coming through the roof of the Forerunner on the FJ itself, those are, base, those are speed clips inside. And those speed clips can actually fall down and that will require you to drop the headliner if that happens. 
So when inserting these bolts, you want to make sure that you don't push down on the on the on the the threaded side, the side that's on the forerunner. You don't want to push down on those very hard at all because you could actually drop that out of this of the uh, roof of the forerunner, and then you're going to have to base, you're going to have to go find them and uh, pop them back up in there, and it's it's not fun. Um, there's airbags on each side of the uh, roof there in that area, sort of like where the B pillar is. And uh, just anytime they're entering that area, it's just not a good thing. So uh, def just be careful when you're doing that. But we haven't had any issues. Uh, they may have fixed it, but the FJ Cruiser definitely it was an issue. All right, in the spirit of just uh, continuing to make this as easy as possible, which it's been super easy so far. Um, a tool that's really going to come in handy for you is if you're using a socket wrench and a uh, 3 8 uh, T40 socket there with an extension, is down at the bottom here, it's going to come in handy to have a swivel. As you can see, the angle, it's not bad whatsoever, but a swivel would just make it that much easier to put these in. And then for alignment purposes, it couldn't really be any easier in the fact that if you see here, it matches up perfectly with the trim that's on the rain gutter. So you base, if you put that flush, it's pretty much right where it needs to be. So there's no second guessing there at all. So now what we're doing is spacing out the crossbars. And one of the immediate considerations that we had was for the max tracks. Uh, as you can see on the FJ, the max tracks are on the back, so we were able to measure those. It's 35 inches, and this rack is set up to accept max tracks pins in these slots. If you see the uh, slot right there, the round slot, that, or the round part of the slot, that's for the max tracks pins to slide into, so they index over. And that spacing is 35 inches. So wherever you want your max tracks, make sure that you have two crossbars that are 35 inches so you don't have to move it later. And Jacob has designed this rack so that the very middle of these slots are evenly spaced at 35 inches. So one of the things I want to point out is uh, we were concerned about adding additional bars once that we had already had mounted the side bars and it very they very easily go into place uh, as long as you turn them at an angle. Um, so you don't have to remove all of the bars to add them. You don't have to loosen them up and push the bars forward. Uh, it makes it very easy to add additional bars. Or delete bars. Or delete bars. Yeah, if you end up deciding you don't need them, that's just extra weight on your roof and you can take them out. So I'm, uh, I'm pretty jealous of this, actually. Pretty awesome. Might end up changing it up as soon as, uh, as, soon as LFD uh, comes up with a uh, FJ Cruiser rack, I might be switching out. We just wrapped up the installation of the LFD off-road uh, full rack on my 2010 Forerunner Trail Edition. Uh, overall, it was a, a very straightforward, easy install. Uh, roughly two hours total on the install from removal of the stock rack to uh, installation of the new rack. Uh, a lot of that time was spent, obviously, with the individual hardware on each of the crossbars. Um, learned a lot. I think that. Um, the rack is very straightforward and very well made. It's got to be one of the best roof racks that I've seen on the market. Um, as far as installation, if you're doing it for 2010 to 2013, make sure that you use the T40. Uh, make sure that you have one of those available. Uh, other than that, a 13 millimeter uh, and obviously some um, 
you know, pneumatic uh, tools or electronic tools will will definitely help with the with the speed up the install. Um, but I'm quite pleased. I love how it looks, uh, and I couldn't think uh, LFD enough um, for building such a great rack.